See, see who we can get it up to. <laughs> that is insane. Hey, downstairs here. So today is a fun day. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm getting away from the motorcycle stuff for this video. Don't worry, there's a lot of good stuff coming soon uh, for all you motorcycle guys out there. But today I'm working on something that is for a good friend of mine. He is an avid uh, motor, or excuse me, cyclist, and uh, he's actually a, a pretty well-known bike mechanic in our area. And uh, he's got a cabin up by us, and um, no ability really to do solar. He's got a lot of trees, and I've we've always talked about this project. And I said, man. I got you, buddy. Hang on. All right, so as I talked about in the intro, this is going to be a pedal powered electrical generator but using really high quality parts, not the junk you find, and not spending much money, quite frankly. Um, so the guts of this system are basically going to be um, the guts of a hoverboard, really. Uh, people don't realize these, these, and here's a picture of the one I grabbed. Um, you know, these things, you can, you can buy them for next to nothing, usually, because the, the kids beat the hell out of them, and then the batteries go dead, and then the parents don't know what to do, so they just throw them out. Or you can buy them for like 20 bucks on Marketplace, and that's what I did. Um, but the thing a lot of people don't realize is that these these wheels, these, these motors that are actually in these wheels are three-phase AC motors. They're actually really high quality, double bearing. They're rated for a huge amount of weight. Um, I don't think people really understand how high quality these are for renewable energy applications. They're, they're really kind of ideal. So we're going to use that for our power. Uh, a bunch of scrap steel that I've had laying around for an arm to hold it. And... Um, this beautiful old Murray uh, 19 whatever exercise bike. And uh, yeah, so, so let's get into the, the fabrication side. We'll wire it and we'll talk in a minute. All right, so we got the basic frame, kind of what we need. Um, again, some just scrap angle I've had, just kind of cut, cut it out and, and made it the appropriate lengths, you know, clean it up, deburred it, whatever. Again, I'm not building a rocket ship here. Now, the other thing a lot of people don't realize about these, these hoverboards, not only do they come with really high quality motors for doing these kinds of applications, wind turbines, um, hydro generators, you know, it's it's crazy actually what you can do with these three-phase AC motors. They're really good stuff. But also, the frame of these hoverboards are pretty decent alloy aluminum extruded pieces that are um, just pretty solid, to be quite honest. So what actually holds that unit in is a block of, of aluminum right here with a machined uh, block on top that actually has a flat section in it. So it's it's so well engineered, I'm just gonna use it again. There's no reason not to use this. It's, uh, it's actually really well done. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this out and grab just this block out of this whole chunk. The rest of this is all garbage. It'll be getting thrown away, but anyway. So that's what we're doing right now. All right, so like I was saying, that's really all we want out of there. Obviously, I'm gonna clean this up, and this is going to be attached to the arm to give me a nice, solid, um, you know, non-moving uh, mounting place for the actual generator to rest on. Um, it's, it's much higher quality than something I would have just, you know, cobbled together in the shop, so why not use it, right? So let's go ahead, I'm gonna clean this up, and I'll be right back. All right, so excuse the disgusting nature of my workbench. Uh, so what I just did was, obviously I, I told you I cleaned off the, I cleaned off this part right here, you know, cleaned it up, whatever. Then in order to make this kind of toolless and easier, I, I took a couple bolts that I had and ground them down. Come on, there you go. Ground them down a bit to give them 
um, basically a, 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 ch a, thin, a, a thinner profile. And then those will just slot right in, right there in between there and keep them uh, flush to the work that I'm, that I'm doing. And uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute. Uh, so this is gonna get mounted on that piece and uh, let's get to that. Right, and I'm using regular zinc stuff. I'm gonna paint all this because this thing is actually gonna live probably outside. I'm sure my buddy's gonna cover it, but I, I, you know, let's be honest, it's gonna it's gonna live its life outside. So we're gonna try to paint it and get it uh, the best we can, right? So that he can uh, hopefully use it for a very very long time and uh, get a lot of electricity out of it. I think that'll be pretty cool. So. And then get this squared away and tightened up on here. There we go. So this is nice. So I, you know, it kind of worked in both ways. So now I have a toolless ability to secure it, but it's also flush to the point where it's not going to interfere with anything. And it's it's about as dead nuts as could be. Nice and straight. It's going to give us a nice axis. And then uh, once I actually get to welding, I can I can square it up even better over there. But I, I'm overall uh, fairly happy. That's that's about what what I was looking to do. You'll see what this will do in a minute. So give me a sec. All right. So any of these motors will do. Doesn't matter. Basically, it's going to sit inside of here, like so. And then, like I said, you've got a, a uh, basically a, a flattened section there that's going to mate perfectly with this side. And then we throw in some bolts. So, so that's your general idea, right? Nice and solid. It's, it's, that's, that's how you want it. There's going to be no side-by-side -side play in there, and that's, that's ideal. Um, then we've got our pieces here. So these are going to be the mount tabs. I am going to probably, let me make sure about something real quick. So this is going to be just like that. So I'm going to want this mount tab, I would say right here just so I have a good spot to weld it to. I think we're gonna go for that. Or I could go on the inside here. Yeah, you know what, we'll do that. And yes, I'm using total scraps that I have around. You know, don't judge me or judge me. I really don't care if you do, but this is a, a low budget build, guys. And then this guy is gonna be over here. Like so, I might do him like this though. Again, so I can get a better place to weld to. Um, yeah, we're gonna do that. Let's weld a little bit here and see if we can make it work, right? All right, so it's the uh, the next day. I got a bunch of the parts are getting painted. Uh, again, I'm not really making something beautiful here. It's more to just keep it from rusting. So while those are drying, I thought, you know what? I really gotta just make this one complete unit for him. So I'm going to <clears throat> put a, a toolbox basically on the back side of this. I had this one I bought for a while back. I forgot why I bought it. I'm not gonna use it though. So I'm gonna pop that right there. Uh, just with a, you know, some angle iron, piece of wood, you know, simple stuff, nothing crazy. This is galvanized or zinc maybe, so you don't want to breathe this stuff in. So I'm going to be welding this real quick and running outside to get a breath of air. Uh, so hang tight.
All right, so we're getting down to kind of final assembly here. It's it's looking pretty good. We got a nice little strong spring right there. Let's get this arm back on, get the motor mounted. And we'll get that in there. Okay. All right, we still want some movement. You know, I don't want it to be too tight on there. So I'm gonna give it just a little bit more. All right, that's perfect. Nice and nice and solid, but not loose. That's the goal. As far as the motors go, it really doesn't matter. Just pick one. Uh, they're both in solid shape, nice and tight. The bearings are tight on them, so I'm not too concerned. Throw that guy in there. I'm actually gonna throw this piece of wood under here just to give me a little bit of a block there. And you take this guy, throw it on there. Look at that. It's a masterpiece. Just kidding. Boom, all right, so we're in. And that's actually looking really good. So, you know what? What I guess I could do too is just grab another spring. Yeah, I'll probably do that. Just grab another spring and make that, so that's fine. All right, so I'm looking pretty good right here. I'm pretty happy with that. There's no interaction there. There's no nothing I don't want basically going on here. It's got good, it's got good traction. Another thing you can do is just combine two of the three phases, and that'll give it a bunch of resistance, and you can see if you're getting any um, slippage. You know, you don't want slippage on this. You want it to be good excuse me, good traction the whole way through this. So you see how notchy that is. That's because I'm combining two of the phases on the motor and it's it's not slipping one bit. So this is giving it a lot of good traction on there. I'm happy with it. We have no interference anywhere. Good, 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 good. I like it. Let's move on to wiring and uh, mounting the box and let's get some testing done. That's really what we want to see here, right? All right, so as you can see, uh, coming right along, I switched out the spring that was here. This big fatty uh, was only on one side and it was kind of tweaking the whole thing. When you put a load on it, it kind of was making the, the actual um, generator start to, to twist the wrong way. So I wanted to have equal pressure on both sides. So I just did a smaller weight with a piece of heat shrink just around here to keep anything from rusting and, and rubbing. Um, and then just attached it right to the front. Again, easy as could be. I think all in together right now, I'm at like maybe 50 bucks, right around there, 50 or 60 bucks. Um, so the next job here is to run the wires back for the actual generator. Um, it is a three phase AC, like I said, that's an important thing to keep in mind. So that is, uh, that's kind of where you get a lot of efficiency from. And that's that's something that you know you can't say with a lot of other types of motors. You know this thing is is definitely unique in that regard, and that's why I went with these hoverboard motors. It's three phase AC, so you have three wire outputs. Uh, so you need a three a three wire extension basically to go to your rectifier. Uh, I'll show you the rectifier in a little bit. Basically it's a little uh, box, a little puck that changes from three phase AC into two wire DC. Uh, it just it doesn't even, we don't even need to get into how it does it or why it's just that's how you do it um, and then you're gonna have high voltage DC in the back there and then you just uh, use a good quality charge controller and you're good to go so I'm using a, an extension cord it has 16 gauge three three conductor in it um, these are just cheap it's it's and it's I don't have to wrap it in anything it's already outdoor rated I can zip tie it along excuse me I can zip tie it along the frame of the bike and call it a day, all right? So uh, we will just try to gingerly get the casing off of this. This is not the proper way, but um, usually you can do it without actually hurting the conductors. There we go. So those are our three conductors. And that's enough carrying capacity for this motor. Uh, this motor is a 200 watt. Uh, so no, excuse me. I'm sorry. 300 watt. Uh, so at the, at the voltage it's at, which is probably going to be around 30 to 45 volts. Um, that should be plenty enough, uh, carrying capacity in 16 gauge wire for the amperage we're going to see, uh, if that makes sense to you guys. So these have, uh, male, um, basically prong, you know, 
terminals on there. Uh, there's probably a better name for them. I can't remember what it is at this point. But uh, so you're just you're wiring to these main three thick wires. Those are your AC outputs. These little the little ribbon wires right here. Those are like Hall effect sensors, temperature sensors, things of that nature. And uh, you're not going to use them. So just you can snip them right off, which I will be doing in a second here. Um, so I'm just putting on female uh, pin connectors. That's all we're doing. And just to keep things simple and keep the factory harness intact, uh, it seems like the right move for me. If you want to do something else, do something else. Um, but that's what we're doing here. So All right, so we're just going to go ahead and connect all three. And then you can take this guy right here, just kind of bring it to its end right there, and just snip it off. You don't need this. This is for when it's actually a hoverboard and you need to kind of monitor where the wheel is in relation to the board and all that. These, you're not using these, so snip them off, be done with it. All right, so now we have our three-phase AC output, right? Keep it simple, guys. I'm all about simple when it comes to this stuff. Don't overcomplicate your life. Honestly, it's not worth it. Um, so what I would tell you all to do too is go ahead and tape each one of these. Even though they are pretty well protected, I would still go ahead and tape each one and then tape it all as a cluster. And then you're just gonna go ahead and zip tie it on down. So let me do that. You don't need to watch me do that. It's pretty simple. And then uh, we'll get you back here in a minute. And now it's gonna start sweeping. I got more, I got more resistance right now. Two amps, four amps, 14 I saw. Holy shit! Holy yeah, shit. you hit 14 there. Oh. Let me give it a go on them. Let me Dude, feel that. It's cranking. Holy or here, you ride. It's your, it's your oh, bike, yeah, man. Here. here, let me see. All right, quick, quick, hop on there. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. All right. We got the generator going right now. What are we at? I saw. 18? 18 oh, amps. Yeah. yeah, yeah I Holy crap. Like 13, 18, Woo. Yeah. All right. My guy. Here, why don't you let me know what the uh, what the amperage is yeah, there? Right. Six. That's wild. And then you can just go at a mellow pace, right? That's pretty comfortable, just mellow. Oh yeah. You could probably do that all day, I bet. What's your mellow pace? Like that's a good mellow pace for. Boom, there you go. So that's really what you would want to be at to just charge your batteries, you know? About 17 on the dial here. Yeah, yeah, buddy. <laughs> the old Murray running strong. All right, so this project's pretty much done. It's looking pretty good. I'm happy with it. This is uh, my good friend that I was talking about earlier. He's got a place next to us upstate and uh, lots of trees. He can't really do solar and He's got, what, 30 years of cycling, easily? Uh, give or take, yeah. Give or take. <laughs> uh, you know, he's a cyclist, he's a bike mechanic, the whole nine yards. This is kind of his bread and butter, and we've been talking about this for easily five years now. I'd say 10. I'd say It's probably 10. And uh, yeah, happy as hell. It came out 16 amps. If you're going crazy, I would say a normal pace, four to six amps, right? That's what you had? That's uh, Yeah, that's what I was give doing. Give or take. Yeah, sitting up, you know, so, taking it easy. I mean, for for a system like this, you know, he could probably do 20, 30 minutes in the morning with coffee <laughs> yeah. and be good to go. I can and, start my and, morning every day with it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, honestly, you're making more power with this than most solar panels, depending on the shading and the elevation and all that nonsense, you know, just in this little package, it's, it's giving you solid, consistent, you know, power uh, and high amperage, which is great. The only thing he's going to need is lithium battery, I think is a good idea. Sure, maybe. Of it is. And then a better, you know, another charge controller and you're good to go. Uh, any questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, I'm going to leave some of this stuff in the description too if you guys want to buy them. That would be great too. And uh, yeah, what do you think? I think for my needs, it's uh, it's the answer that we've been talking about for, for as long as we've been talking about. I mean, until the cabin gets up and running, I think this is what's going to keep my small devices powered and yeah, yeah. keep us clean. Hell yeah. yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, brother.